Join us on our South Dakota Road Trip Series Part 4, where Mandy, Orlando and Abraham is in the back seat. On this trip, we're taking you through these Grand Canyon-esque formations that are the Badlands National Park, then onto an Indian reservation to learn about ghost dancing at Wounded Knee. It's not what you think. Then we hit Wall Drug in Wall and you'll see why 2 million visitors flock here each year. Did you know South Dakota had an underground secret during the Cold War with Russia? The Minuteman Missile Museum explains it all. And have you ever been to a prairie dog town? They're so cute! We also head to South Dakota's capital and up to Gettysburg, but not that Gettysburg. And lastly, we go way up north to Mobridge to see a sitting bull. Nope, not him. We've got a lot to see, so grab your snacks, we're ready to go. Are you getting a load of this, Abraham? It's absolutely gorgeous. What earth is going on? It's on unbelievable. Don't be scared Abraham, come and have a look. That's better. It looks like a lot of people are going hiking around here. Do you want to go for a walk Abraham? This looks nice. Wait a minute. What did that sign say? Did you see that? Oh, no, 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 no. This girl's getting back in the car. Can't wait for our next stop. It's the reservation at Pine Ridge. I've never been to a reservation before, and this one's really famous. The land belongs to the Native Americans, so we're under tribal law now. Abraham, behave yourself. Get your head out of there. On the reservation is a town called Wounded Knee, and it has a sad and bloody history. It's the site of the massacre of Wounded Knee in 1890. It's the age-old story of the white settlers who'd moved out west and the Native Americans. The settlers were afraid of the Lakota tribes doing their ghost dance, thinking it was a sign of attack, but it was actually a spiritual dance to bring back the ghosts of their past, the ancestors and the herds of buffalo. The army was called in, the ghost dancers forced into a camp and told to surrender their weapons. Some refused, shots were fired, and mayhem ensued, killing 300 people, many of them women and children. This site marks the last ever armed battle between the Sioux Indians and the United States Army. From super sad to super fun, we're heading to Wall. But what's Wall Drug? There are signs everywhere. Wall Drug is a must-see if you're in South Dakota. It's a shopping mall, a fun park, an arcade, and a food court. But it didn't start out that way. It started as a simple drugstore owned by the Husted family. To attract business, they offered free ice water to travelers. And now you need a map to get around. There's a backyard mall with a picnic area and food court, arcades and shows for the kids, gift shops selling everything from cowboy boots, western wear, and all kinds of South Dakota memorabilia you never knew you wanted. But you do need at least one buffalo souvenir. There's a western art gallery and even a roadside chapel. It's fun for the whole family, and you can spend an entire day here but we went in the morning for the coffee and donuts. For their maple donuts alone, it's worth the stop. I ate this whole box and I don't care about the calories. I enjoyed every mouthful. 
Well, hello, Philip. We're here to see the Minuteman nuclear missile site, the secret of the Great Plains during the Cold War with Russia. Nuclear missiles were hidden deep underground in silos in rural South Dakota beneath the cows and the corn. With the press of a button, America could launch the Minuteman missile in less than a minute. There are three sites to what's now a national park. There's a museum with a movie at the visitor's center, and a short drive away is the Delta One missile site where you can look down into the silo. And the Delta One launch control facility, but make reservations because it's Ranger-led tours only. From bombs to fuzzballs, three minutes away is a prairie dog town, and these guys are the cutest. You can watch them pop up out of their holes and you can even feed them whole peanuts, which you buy right there. Look at Abraham, he's fascinated, but not in a good way. They're so loud. Before we say goodbye to the puppies, we need a photo at the giant prairie dog statue. And let me see if I can get a selfie. Perfect! From Philip to Pierre. Except the capital of South Dakota isn't pronounced Pierre, as you might think. It's actually Pierre. Whenever we go to a state's capital, we always go to its capital building. It's a one-stop shop for the state's history, culture, art and architecture. And they usually have beautiful gardens and sculptures. This one had a gorgeous war memorial, too. Inside, it's all marble and gold. Gorgeous architecture. And just look at the stained glass on that rotunda. And look at Abraham. He went all the way to the top to tour the House and the Senate before he got fed up and wanted to go for a walk downtown. Across the river in Fort Pier, we found some great views and a bit of French history at the top of the hill. The story goes that in 1743, the Verendrave brothers claimed this land for France by putting a lead plate there. And wouldn't you know it, that plate is now a national landmark. Another landmark in town is a rodeo museum owned by cowboy champion turned movie stuntman Casey Tibbs. The randomness. And if you're feeling sporty, you can drive 10 minutes north to Oahe Lake. And here, you can kayak, water ski, and birdwatch for bald eagles. An hour north is Gettysburg, South Dakota, a tiny town where the battle wasn't. The main thing in town is the Dakota Sunset Museum, home to the sacred medicine rock. There are actual human footprints and handprints in that rock. How on earth did they get there? Inside the next room are exhibits dating back to the 1800s, including antiques and memorabilia from the Civil War. There are also lots of stuffed animals, which Abraham didn't quite understand. Nope, that boy was not amused. Further north on a hill overlooking the beautiful Missouri River on the Standing Rock Reservation is a monument honoring Chief Sitting Bull. Do we know who he was, Abraham? He's the political activist who's famous for defeating General Custer in the U.S. Army at the Battle of Little Bighorn. <laughs> How does he remember this stuff? And do you know who sculpted this statue? It was the same guy who carved the crazy horse. That's right, Zielkowski. We've learned so much on this trip, but that's a wrap for this video. So thank you for letting us share the world with the world. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel, and I'd love you to check out the book that I wrote. The link is down below and we'll see you in the next video.